able to, uh, to ask questions tonight. We meet in October, one in November. And all of those meetings are designed to assist you in completing this so you can qualify for rental assistance. Um, how you qualify, um, there are uh, criteria, obviously, they are in place and how you can qualify. Uh, we hope that all of you will as we uh, pre-qualify you to receive those dollars and then make the steps of relocating into another um, unit, another home um, outside of Twin City. Um, obviously our intent is to work with each one of you, that's why we begin the process now, um, to take you all the way through the end of the year. If, we, if it requires that we have additional conversations, we will do that. Bruce is going to cover that there's the opportunity that you can, there's a phone number that we're including in the packet that you can receive. You can call that number anytime, and we can also um, work with you and set up a time if you're not able to attend the other meetings that we're going to have. Um, like I mentioned in the beginning, there's water and coffee and, and tea. I want to say thank you. Um, I don't know if you're here. Uh, representative from Goodwill are in the back, and I just want to say thank you. Um, you know, the here and the meeting is not at the clubhouse in Twin City, is because um, the owners of the park have not been responsive to the council. And uh, so we're forced to identify another partner that's close by. So you have the option of walking here or, or being very close if you drove here. Uh, but Ideally, we wanted to have this meeting at the clubhouse so you can literally walk there. But ownership has not been responsive. We hope that through this process, between now and the end of the year, as you're working through this, that ownership will begin engaging with the county. Um, but regardless of how they react, uh, the county has put together a relocation assistance uh, working with the state to provide assistance to you as you relocate out of the Twin City. Um, so with that said, so um, Bruce is going to walk you through a brief presentation. At, at the end of the presentation, as you have questions, we have tables set up. That if you have questions specifically about the relocation assistance, uh, you can sit down with one of our staff and, and you can have your questions answered. If you have questions related to the inspections that need to happen as far as the relocation assistance, we're going to have staff here and they, they can answer that question too. Um, but again, thank you for coming. Uh, when I when I got here, it was raining, and um, you know I have makeup before I came to the meeting, but obviously it's completely gone. Okay, so uh, yes. Does this mean that any requests for a waiver of the substantial damage evaluation are just being declined at this point, based on the original context of this conversation? No, you you have the right um, and. At the end of the meeting, you know, when we're asking questions, you can ask that question. We have someone here that can they can give you more information, but you have a right to appeal that determination. Um, and if and, you've been, you can go through that process. And if you've been appealing it for more than a year already and falling on deaf ears, do we just start to keep asking or? Well, let's wait until we go through the presentation and then we get into the questions, okay? Okay. Great. Bruce? Thank you, Tom. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. Just back here. Okay, again, good evening. Cover the relocation and rental assistance program. Bruce, get the microphone closer to your lips. How's that? Better. Is that all right? Better. Thank you. Um, as Tom mentioned, we were able to receive an allocation from the state government that basically was in response to Hurricane Idalia. And so these dollars can be utilized to assist anybody that was impacted by that storm. And so we designed this program that will really be specific for people to be able to relocate. So, you know, we're talking about a rental assistance program, but it's also relocation. So tonight we're going to go over the program. What's required to be eligible to receive the assistance through the program, how to apply for the assistance, what to expect in terms of the process and next steps. 
You should have received a handout when you came in, and basically what we're going to cover tonight is pretty much all about it. So two days of succinct general information. Uh, question is how much of this is going to be our first meeting of seven. Um, we're going to make the applications available. That actually started today, so the application process will be starting today. Um, we want to meet with you. Give you the information of what the program is about. What it's we got noticed 24 to. hours ago. Um, this. And so here's a general overall view of who, who would be able to participate in this program. Um, in terms of eligibility, you need to have documented substantial damage from Hurricane Andai. We know in Twin Cities Mobile Home Park, just about every unit sustained substantial damage. So for the most part, I had two cracks. You know, if you were in one of those units, it's going to probably pass that test. There's also income requirements. Um, we have a basic chart here. Which I don't qualify for. There is an income limit, and that's based on household size. It's set to 80% of the area median income. So if you're a three-person household, for example, if you're household... Because I own my own business and have a kid. $68,800 amount, you would be income eligible. I have two. Your home would have to be your primary residence. It is. Unit, or if you're renting a unit, either way, you could be eligible for the assistance. But I don't qualify because I made too much money. What can the assistance be used for? As I mentioned, patient and rental assistance program. And so for anybody who's qualified, the time to would be the moving expenses. Um, I get to light it on fire and call the fucking fire department. Funds being used for security deposits, first month's rent, last month's rent. Um, we're also going to make another eligible use if you have a land lease that maybe you have six more months to pay on the lot rent. We can cover those expenses so that you don't end up with any credit damage or the cost of basically buying out that land lease to be able to move out of the park. So my credit's going to get fucked so too. those expenses on top of then the monthly rent, we would pay basically 100% of the rent up to 12 months. But not me. The amount of assistance would be capped at up to $30,000. I have a zero. So we've kind of covered most of the eligibility steps. Um, just a reminder that it does need to be your primary residence. Um, if everybody here probably is from Twin Cities tonight, we're specifically talking about your park. It's an eligible location. Um, the hurricane damage. We've got Nobody's been fire. talking we've about this park for a fucking year. And then income eligibility. Sure. Um, this is basically a voluntary program. Are we obligated? Um, and so at this point, you know, this is a program that if you'd like to utilize the rental system. We have a choice. Is the, is the park being closed to the point that at some point the excess of that will be happening? No, the park, to my knowledge, is not being closed. It's it's owned by somebody else. Or, so the county is not not being closed, but being forced to upgrade on land we don't own. Yes, the question was whether or not the park is closing and residents have to move out. That's a big confusion. Yeah, and I don't know that I can answer long term questions about the park. Um, we may talk about that at the end a little bit in terms of the inspection process, park ownership. Um, why don't, we, why don't we save that till the end of the presentation? We'll we focus on the rental get system the program, line. and then we'll take those kind of questions. And we've got other county staff that might be able to answer some of those. No, they won't. Questions, if that's okay. Okay. So, how do you tap into this assistance program if you're interested? Um, you don't make we're money. Providing some information tonight. We've also got a web page um, and handouts. The handouts include your telephone number, a website address for more information, and the application is now currently available. So, so I'm going to lie, um, and I'm going to become a felon, and then they'll give me housing. As soon as you'd like, um, there's no, no big rush to do so. I mean, you probably want to go on tonight and kind of think about this and look at some options. You may have questions. That's why we're going to come back in a few more no, weeks and no answer questions. questions that come up. Um, but the application process is open and available today at this website. 
Um, yeah. What you'll need to do is you might, you might want to log in and take a look at the application. There's an instructional video about how to register and, and to apply. Um, you can start an application, save it, <laughs> come back and... I'm a broke bitch. Where you have to, uh, all at one time, put everything and I don't qualify. And there are some information requirements that you'll want to probably gather before you complete the application. Um, this is most of those. Um, one of the big requirements is income information. So we'll be looking for income verification information. You want any documentation of ownership of the unit, um, your current land lease. You need to know how many people live in, in the unit. That's based on the household size. I'm looking to adopt 14 fucking kids. Like so this is kind of a list of the documents that you want to get prepared to, uh, to include in your application. And so if you'd like to, to go ahead and... So the applications are open, and so you would go ahead and submit your application. Once you hit that submit button... I can't wait. All the documents are there, everything makes sense. Um, if there is a missing piece of information and we have any questions, we just reach out to you. Typically by email, we'll send an email and say, oh, it looks like maybe, maybe we need one more um social security card for example anything that we're missing if you've got questions you can call us and then we'll work with you to get, get any information that you need added to the application once we review and they're going to be an asshole when they call you back that we talked about know that tonight, you know we'll send you a confirmation letter and what that letter will do is basically give you that documentation that you qualify just for this program and that'll have an amount of assistance that you're eligible for and that's often, often very useful if you're looking to move somewhere, you're applying for an apartment, for example, and you've got that documentation that you have that basically as guaranteed payment for, yeah. for that new unit that you're looking to go to. And so once you get that approval, you know, there's still a few next steps, finding that next apartment, um, and a few other things. And so we're going to have what we call case managers. They'll be here at the, the follow-up meetings or available to call by phone that will help you Sort of through that process, once you've applied, you've got that initial eligibility documentation. Um, there'll be several next steps that you need to do. And we'll work with you on that. Um, one would be the inspection part. Um, we do want to be able to come and inspect the unit. Um, part of this process that we need to make sure that we're including is that um, somebody the program moves out and then somebody else moves into that unit because we know a lot of those units you know, have some damage, they can't be repaired, it's not economically part of the program. Probably is can't be buy a house. We're providing assistance so you can relocate, move to another area, and then that unit gets removed. Not St. Pete, so though, because this happen. shit's going to be condos. And if that unit is no longer habitable, it would be condemned and nobody else can move into it. Another way would be to volunteer to, Ooh, they're gonna condemn it. to um, have the unit removed or demolished. And we're also going to look at providing some assistance for, for that purpose as well. 10 grand a unit, DM so Construction, we'll CBC 126415. We'll help you with looking for a new location to move to, through housing resources and things like that. And we'll talk to you and work with you on you can't move them into requirements. We'll look for you to be able to find a, a new location and enter into a, a one year lease. And I think a key part of that, um, typically when we get a grant program, it's it's in Pinellas County. Sometimes it's a certain city, sometimes it's a certain area, almost always limited to Pinellas County. But as you all know, affordability is a very big issue in many places, and especially here in Pinellas County. And so the state has agreed that we won't have any geographic limitations. Get the fuck out of Pinellas County is what you're going to hear. Pinellas County, but you can also move. Bye, Pinellas County. But I got a case number, so 51 fucking miles. And by the way, my kid's in a special school, so literally nowhere else to go. I mentioned earlier there will be moving expenses, so moving expenses are another eligible cost. That's the size of your home and the one that you're moving into. And so these expenses will be covered through the program to help you relocate as well. $300 so that, minimum. Like I said, this is sort of a, a very general overview. There's you're a professional to show up. To absorb. We tried to summarize it pretty succinctly on the one page paper so that you can take that with you and have the general program information. Um, we'll be back here at the upcoming meetings. 
uh, October, November, and December. Um, and in between, you can certainly answer any phone calls, questions like that that you may have. Um, and with that, we'll take some questions on the rental assistance program first, and then broader questions um, after that. Is it specifically limited to rentals, or is there any provision for purchasing a single-family home or multi-family home within Pinellas County or the surrounding areas? Um, this particular program is for rental assistance. Now, we do have a separate program, um, down payment assistance program, available through Pinellas County. There's also some other down payment assistance programs um, available through the state and other cities. So Certainly, but... To follow that up, you're essentially taking a unit that had a monetary value for resale and making it worth zero and contributing it only to a rental. Are there specific programs that make that not a zero dollar, you know, tear down of a unit that used to be worth something before this program got put into place? For somebody that wants to get out and buy a house, or do we specifically have to conform to a rental to qualify for this program in any manner? This specific program is limited to rental, um, but the county down payment assistance program would be available to anybody that wanted to, to take advantage of that. That's a program that offers up to $75,000 for down payment assistance. Um, but does it provide any value for a unit that is now essentially worth $0 because of this incident under this program? No, the program doesn't purchase existing units. Thank you. How soon is the program going to start? When you fill your applications out, how long will it take? Um, the application process, once an application is complete, will take approximately three to five business days to review that application and get back to you. Um, and then, like I said, we do have a, a few steps after that in terms of the inspection process and then finding a, a new location. Could move fast. The question was, is it mandatory that they move home, move home to park? Is it mandatory? Now, through this program, I and mean, this is a voluntary program. Um, to the, you don't so have to. You know, it's a voluntary it's program. Full and to told. Utilize it. As part of that, you would certainly be moving because it is a relocation rental assistance program. And if they choose Relocation rental assistance. program is voluntary so you don't have to participate uh, we hope that you do because um, the county went through the lengthy process to accumulate that amount of dollars and I don't think it has been done before in accumulating the flexibility in the dollars but flexibility the reality is that the part we're trying to find a sustainable solution and that part for with any draining event and any storm will be in the same we will be dealing with the same issue as well so, so sure the acres, reality, and they got two fucking the reality billion. Is that although the program is voluntary, but the the county is interested in uh, enforcing the owner to ensure that that park complies with our regulations. Just so you know. That. Yeah. Well, the owner, I, I can tell you that the owner has not been responsive even to the county, which is very, and I was talking with the media that was here, and it has to be responsive to you. Yeah, they're not. They're not. I'm not the only one. Not, sure. not special. Yeah. Although we do plan to, and through this process, to enforce uh, against the owner. I think I need a fucking. Would you join a HOA? Yeah, if I ran it. <laughs> I know, but like, until you get the fuck out, like, would you? Like, five dollars a year membership dues. Like, let's start a fucking HOA. One of the things that uh, no, we, and we are sensitive about that. The question, I'm sorry, I, I'll repeat the question. The question is, um, she's a single um, uh, fixed income and it will be hard to afford anything out there 
One of the things that we are doing is for those that qualify, we begin conversation with the Pinellas County Housing Authority. So at the end of the year, with the rental assistance, we have a year to work with, with the Housing Authority, and they have committed. And I believe there's someone here from the rental. Yep, they're here. They have committed to work with the county, so you transition, if you qualify, you transition to a voucher. And you don't have to be uh, concerned. Right. We're going to give you 30 grand right. and then a right. Section 8 voucher. I'm not. Yeah. The program is designed, um, the criteria of the program are uh, we try to keep it as simple as possible. We it's state dollars working through the county. Uh, if you don't, that's why we're going to have case managers who can work individually. Um, I would be surprised that some of the residents may not qualify, but if you don't qualify, uh, we will have to have that conversation at that time. But we have to go through the process with the case manager because uh, this situation is... Creative unique. accounting. We have a set of criteria got to bullshit here, so some motherfuckers. It will be better that once you go through that process, you will know 100% whether you qualify or not. Your spreadsheet kind of proves it. <laughs> So it's similar to the answer the, that I just gave um, to the person here. This program is, is a temporary program. We have a set of dollars to assist with relocation. And so, and we, not we, but I'm gonna give credit to the staff of housing and community development. They work with the state, because the state usually provide three to six months of rental assistance, and they were able to extend that to a year. The conversation we're having with the Pinellas County Housing Authority is that at the end of that cycle of the temporary assistant, you had that time to work with them to qualify for a voucher. They made a commitment to make the residents of this community a priority because there are a lot of requests that go through the through the housing authority, but they made a commitment to make it a priority. Or you don't ask, so you, you just figure it out like me. A voucher that can cover them. Uh, their system, you gotta cover a percentage of it. It's not 100%. Right, no, no, yeah. no, sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have a question here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, I can do it in Spanish so the rest can, you know, I can. <laughs> I'll catch up. Um, Sure. Thank you. El, el diseñado, uh, part of the program is that the vivienda has to be very impressed. And if the vivienda is in a condition where the person can't live, the criteria of the county, what it means, is very different from what you think is what it means for a non qualified no cualificar para que personas puedan vivir en, en esa vivienda. Pero vamos a suponer que va por ese proceso y la vivienda está en condición de que la persona puede vivir en esa vivienda. El problema con el parque es de que el, el, el parque está en un lugar donde, um, porque está en un lugar donde siempre va a tener problemas con agua y daño de agua, de que um, vivienda no pueden ser mejoradas a cierto nivel sin ser, sin ser elevada. So, si la vivienda no ha sido elevada, aunque tú le has hecho algunos preparos, uh, no mide la cualificación del condado más probable. Pero vamos a ir por ese proceso de la impresión. Y ese proceso de impresión va a determinar si te puede quedar en la vivienda o no puede quedarte en la vivienda. Um, Tom, I think you need to translate that for me. 
the, the question was related to um, Let's see if I'm right if you don't raise your house because sure. of the flood level you don't qualify and you gotta get the fuck out anyway Let's see. Well, I can tell you that the staff here have worked extremely hard. Um, uh, you can search. I think we are the only community that has packaged the package that we are offering today. Because it took a long time working with the state to get to this point, you know? So Let's if it was available, I can tell you that every community where has something similar I really do. that they're offering. Um, Let me finish and then, um, but the reality is that now the dollars are available. So we want everyone to know about it, take advantage of it. They're available uh, for a limited period of time. So they gotta be utilized by 2026. So we have about two years, you know, um, to do that. So. Fucking bet. That will be the moving expense. So if you have, if you if you have one, yeah, yeah, well, that will be moving expenses. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so yes. No, no, we actually on top of the $1.4 million that are from the state, staff from Housing Community Development became very creative to identify other dollars to match to ensure that all of the residents in the county, that in, in Twin City, if they apply, they can receive up to $30,000. Just a little bit. For rental. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah. Not necessarily. So let me let me. So sure, you're gonna move into a safer unit where we don't have the issue with the unit every time. Every time it rain or a storm. Well, yeah. So, but let me just answer the question, and then we move on to the question. Sure. The question is um, because this is temporary. Um, you know, go ahead. Do we have to raise our house? We have to raise our house, and uh, the answer is, if you improve the your home, yes. But at least I can. Uh, you let me improve it, and then you tell me, you know what, you improved it, so now you got to raise the money. Don't you think that would have been better than you put more on improvement? So we provided a letter to you stating that you were substantially damaged from the flooding from Hurricane Idalia. Two cracks. And we also did a workshop out there. We had FEMA out there to provide you with some assistance. We explained that you could live temporarily in these homes if they were safe for a period of time. For a period of time. However, the units need to become into compliance. Because they changed the floodplain designation at the federal fucking level. Exactly as the letter stated. There was a period of time. The letter stated. It has to be elevated. I believe it is 10.4 plus one. We are within our purview in the unincorporated county. It's our responsibility. So we are dealing with our responsibility because you are within the county. The millionaires are outside the purview of their responsibility. Well, yeah. yeah. I can tell you that, that if we can find state dollars to give you a new home and brace it, that's what I will be offering you today. But that's not available. But that's not available. So if I don't qualify for this program, if I don't move out, 
Let's move on by mobile home by June 1st, 2021. Uh, 20, what's going to happen? We will work with you if you're in the process of moving your mobile home. So, Worm, well, then you're not able to move it. Then you need to take advantage of the, the relocation assistance that we're providing. Based, based on what I'm the question is that if we have until 2025 to relocate based on the letter, but this essentially letter they were saying, if he doesn't qualify for the dollars, um, relocation assistant, and he's not able to relocate because the unit is gonna, it's not in good condition. Right, so uh, the problem is it's in, two, in two and a half condition because I fixed my house. Yeah. That's not like 70, but it's not, you say it cannot be relocated in, in, in New Orleans. Yep. So, 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 so your home will be inspected. So let's start there, okay? So we will inspect your home. But the thing and is that just based on the numbers, you guys won't even get to the inspector, so I just won't qualify. I earn, I earn more than, than what you're showing over here. So I just won't qualify. So what's gonna happen to my property? What's gonna happen to all the money that I invested on my property and myself? I can tell you that if you don't qualify and you make too much money, okay? I can tell you right now that um, the assistant that we put together is for people that actually need the assistance, okay? In, in those levels. So, uh, it's, so I was going to find my Well, that's why I said you need to sit down with a case manager because I think you you got to go through the I exercise. I need to sit down with a fucking that, lawyer, not a case that, manager. That what you, um, your perception of qualifying or not may not be the case. That's why we're going to have case managers so you can go through it. So is it optional or is it not optional? It's optional for the program, but if once your unit is inspected, it's not optional to move out. If your unit is not habitable, the county is going to take steps to work with you. That's why we put the, the, the assistance. Uh, but we cannot have residents year over year going through the challenge that they're going. And to be honest, um, this might be a completely different conversation if ownership was working closely with the county. So, Class uh, action will. lawsuit time. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Both sides are saying the other side's not talking, by the way. We can we can sit down with you before the end of the day. Lisa will walk you through it. That information was included in the original letter that you received. Okay, but I'm just, we have the information. Yeah, we have the information and we can share it with you. That's what we're saying. We have it. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Once they hide, it has to be elevated. Seven, eight, two. Yeah, but the ground is at three or four feet, so it's about seven, seven, eight feet off the ground. Like the, the side of the garage. Seven, seven, eight, 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 e
Si no se puede mover durante la inspección y es determinado de que la condición de la unidad está en cierta condición, no solo la, la unidad tiene que ser, no puede vivir en la unidad. En la unidad. Sí. El dinero que le vamos a dar es para... Sí, pero no, no da, no. Es que no va a dar para una renta. Y después de un año, sí, se pueden quedar en esa vivienda. Ah, tenemos, hemos hablado con otra agencia que provee el pago de la renta. Y pueden, pueden ¿Cuánto te cuesta la renta? El programa de ellos tiene diferentes niveles. Oh, Porque aquí se paga 700 pesos y si la gente te cobra 1.200, 1.500 pesos, ¿qué tú haces? Con el programa de ellos, tú solamente hace? paga lo que puedes pagar. Ah, ah te pago 1.500 por seis meses. No, no, por, un año. Por, toda la, por toda la vida. Pero ¿por qué no lo dan el dinero, el dinero que quieren entregar a las personas? ¿Por qué no se lo dan y que cada cual haga lo que tiene que hacer con su dinero? Porque no es, nada, no es lógico salir de una renta que paga 650 pesos, que tiene dos niños chiquitos para meterte en una renta de mil y pico pesos y, que, y, y por un año y después del año no te me meto con mis hijos. Pero el, al final del año de esta ayuda... Durante ese año se puede quedar en esa misma vivienda. Con la ayuda, con la ayuda de, la, de, de la otra agencia que tenemos. So, es un voucher. So. Okay. So the question were related to what do you do at the end of the year? Um, it's only for a year. At the end of the year, we're working with Canales County Housing Authority, so you can apply. And the way they, section. And I'm not going to speak for their program, but the way the program works is you only pay, you only pay what you can pay, and so and the voucher will cover the difference. And, uh, so. I paid forty thousand dollars and eight, like seven hundred a month to keep that shit there. I don't know what I'm gonna do. So, with regard to relocation. Are there communities nearby that some of the older units could qualify to move to, or is it specifically disqualified by date of manufacturing? You can actually relocate to, we're not dictating where you relocate, although we're going to be working with for the case manager to identify units that are available in the area. But doesn't code preclude some that are manufactured before a certain date? Doesn't local code or state code supersede like a manufacture date? For relocation. Yeah, if, we, if you relocate, it will be into a unit that meets the county code. But if we were to relocate our units that were fabricated, some of them in the early 70s, mid 70s, are there any surrounding areas or communities that would permit that for units? I, see, I, see. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Okay. Um, so we're going to have. Um, just so everyone knows, um, we're going to have a meeting in October 9, November 13, and December 11. And we'll work with each one of you to understand what your situation is, income level, all of those challenges, and work with the case manager to see how we can get you to qualify for the dollars. Okay? Um, in, in the interim, between now and October, if you want to talk to someone from the county, uh, can you bring... Here's the number that you got to call is 727-464-8210. And, um, and we can connect with you, sit down with you, and, and begin that conversation. You don't have to wait until October 9th, okay? Um, the, the rental agreement, what is the Yes, uh, that's something that the, um, the staff work with the state. Typically, they require that you remain within the same area. You can you can literally relocate 
uh, nationwide, okay. anywhere. And how long Unless you have a case a number. Once you are pre approved, we will work agreement. with you, but the dollars are have to be spent by 2026. By 2026. Okay. So we have so, so we have some time. We have some time. Actually relocate and find a place. Correct. Okay. Um, and uh, I had another question. Did you keep going on about how we have that documentation and substantial damage? How, is, how did we have that from a year ago? I mean, there, there, there are parts of our home that, yes, are damaged still, and ours is actually from the flooding, not actually from... That's what I mean, is that letter that you've received, the letter you've received, uh -huh. automatically qualify you for the status of substantially damaged. Okay. So, you don't have to do anything else. Okay, and then the, the, the moving expenses, how do you count your rooms on that? <laughs> Um, basically, the rooms, the bathrooms do not count, but bedrooms and other rooms do. So we'd have to look at your unit and make a determination there. If it's two bedrooms and a living room, then that would be a, a three bedroom. And so the unit you'd be moving to, we'd, you'd have to find something somewhat comparable. If it's a 2-2, two -two, we would be looking at a 2-2. Two -two. Um, we'd pay up to the local market rent, depending on where you move to. And, and then kind of the same thing on the, the relocation expense. It's total number of rooms for that chart. Okay. How long does it take for you guys to come in and inspect and tell us and get approval after we've gotten the FEMA letter? Um, those inspections, once you want an inspection, we'd probably be out there within a week, I would think, or five. So if you request inspection, um, we don't have to wait until between now and December, is to make sure that we want that we work with all of you right. to see if you qualify, right. get you set up, pre-qualified, Yeah, I think that's probably a good good ballpark number, so I'd encourage you to go ahead and look at the application as soon as you can, kind of review that, what the requirements are. If you have questions, give us a call, we'll assist you with that. I, I had another question about the, uh, when you said you come in and, and condemn or demolish the homes. Um, we, we have the titles to the homes. Do we really have to deal with the demolition portion, or can we just sign those titles back over to the owner of the park after you condemn them? Yeah, you can condemn it all you want to. I don't care, okay? Yeah. The, the owners of these, this park are, are absolutely property. Yeah, but they're not going to work with uh, the county most likely. So, w you were you were get a contractor to demo the unit. Uh -huh. We will reimburse you one hundred percent of the cost. Well, what if we don't have the money to, to pay it out of pocket to begin with? How can we get reimbursed yeah, for something we don't have money for? The contractor complete the work. We will pay the contractor. Okay, so you'll just flat out pay the contractor. Yeah, we pay the contractor. That's what I mean. I'm a licensed contractor. I'll work with you. So you don't have to pay up front. We pay the contractor to do it. Okay. But you the one that. The, um, as the owner request to demo the unit, uh -huh. we will pay the, the contractor for the cost. Okay. And then I have a question. I got you. Um, <laughs> when it comes to, because I have a dog, and I know a lot of apartments have restrict okay, uh, weight limits and pet fees and pet rent and all this stuff. Like, how how is how is that gonna work when it comes to having like animals? Yeah, a lot of uh, apartments this day, they understand the family have pets. Um, there are going to be some that may not allow, but I cannot imagine that every single one that we're going to consider that will be the case. So, so that's, and you're more familiar with that. Yeah, there are some units out there with, that are pet friendly, but however, that pet deposit would not be an eligible expense. That's something you probably have to cover, but we can cover security deposits and other first and last month rent, but any pet deposits would be up to you. Oh, what if you just fix it up? The dollars are not to, to repair the unit. 
is to assist you with relocating out of that unit. Yeah, we don't, yeah, they're not. They're relocation assistance. yeah. <laughs> what happens to Just know that um, the process we're going to take, your unit will be inspected. Regardless of what you pay for, it's like me, I go buy a car, the unit's going to be inspected. If the unit is in good condition, it's not going to be, through code enforcement, it's not going to be determined to be unhabitable. So, lo que significa que puede vivir en la unidad. Pero, se le hicieron mucha. Um, no arreglo básico que, es, que son requeridos para seguir viviendo en la vivienda, pero se le añadieron, uh, hicieron otra área que añadieron más a su unidad o hicieron inversiones que son más de lo básico para vivir en la vivienda. Esas inversiones las tuvieron que haber hecho y al mismo tiempo elevar la unidad. Y si no lo hicieron, entonces van a tener pérdida. Si eso es lo que sucede. Like, the, the dollars that we put together, which is very um, unusual, the 30,000, a little more than 30, Just say is also allowing no. you to relocate. Just say no. And you consider, you consider the, um, the investment we're making of the 34,000 dollars um, although we're not buying your unit, but what we're saying is the limitation we have to the state is only to relocate. We're going to assist you with that piece of it. Yeah. You can, for basic, just basic things that, that meet the code. But if you're doing improvement to the home that, has, that require, oh, the program? Yeah. yeah. The dollars are only for relocation assistance. They fucking lied. <laughs> assistant will cover the cost of ending the lease. Well, no, it's not the cost of ending the lease. It's the fact that they can hold that lease over us when until they give us approval to, to demolish that home yeah. based on our lease. Yeah. So the, we, we are the fire department don't care. In a perpetual <laughs> situation, are you guys going to back us up that, that we have the right to, to get out of this lease the home no longer exists there. And, and I don't have a copy of your lease that you signed with them, but we, any any lease that you sign, there's always the ability of ending the lease, you're just responsible for paying all the costs associated with ending the term of that lease. So if you well, have yeah. nine months left, you're responsible well, no, for paying that. Most of us, okay, if we've been there for more than a year, are in a month to month, because they won't sign any lease with us, okay? They just keep raising our rent every year, whatever. But part of our original lease is the fact that we have to get permission from park management or owner to remove or demolish the home. It is part of the lease. It's so the law. We get out of Contractor that has to get it signed. We got to file an NOC. And say that we we didn't pay our rent because we demolished the home and we left, and then they come after us because we demolished the home without their approval because we're not going to get their approval. Well, let's see where we get there with the <laughs> <laughs> Well, so our credit gets, gets No, up. no, because our yeah. credit is to pay all, to pay the remainder of all of your lease, so you're not financially reliable for that unit. Whether they allow you to demo the unit without permission, that's a different question, but let's, you know, so. Because that, that we, we're not, so they're getting fucking paid no matter what I do. As long as we, 
sell the house or... Sí. Ya no. Ahí no va a haber casa de compra por lo que ustedes Una casa ahí que está por encima de la sí. No, no. En la fecha que pusimos. Sí, sí, yo sé. Que la fecha que pusimos ahí, vamos a poner si usted tiene el proceso de elevar su vivienda para, para que pueda medir los requerimientos. No se puede elevar. Es imposible. No, no, pero la pregunta de usted es: la fecha que tiene es hasta el 2025, ¿verdad? Y no me tengo que ir. So, entre ahora y el 2025, si usted está trabajando con el condado a través de este proceso, vamos a extender de esa fecha. ¿Y qué pasa si yo no voy a trabajar por el condado? Si no va a trabajar con el condado, no es es, es, esto no es obligatorio, sí, pero... Yo no le veo un sentido, sí. porque no se va a poder hacer. No esto no va a ser obligatorio, pero el condado va a um, impresionar las viviendas. Y si la vivienda encontrada que, que no mide, no importa. Si encuentra que no mide, entonces el condado va a, va a requerir, porque no mide los requerimientos, de que usted tiene que hacer varias cosas, elevarla o remover la unidad. Left it or leave it. Yeah. It's your, it's your, it's your responsibility, but the owner has to ensure that you do it, and they have not been doing it. So. You can't improve land you don't own without the owner's permission under state code. You're fucking oh, away. By code, you're fucked. You can't do it. Fuck around and find out. Team FASO. I'm in. <laughs> El, el condado tiene opciones para enforzar las reglas del condado y hay varias reglas que el dueño tiene que, que mantener y no ha mantenido. So, el condado tiene la oportunidad de hacer eso y vamos a tomar esos pasos con el dueño. El problema es el, el, problema es el dueño del parque. Yo lo que no entiendo porque somos nosotros. Pero nosotros vamos a pagar el precio. Sí. No, no, no nos están beneficiando nosotros. No, no, el, 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 el problema es el dueño del parque, pero nosotros yeah. vamos a pagar el precio. Si usted cumple el código y todo, usted cualifica para todo. Si fue manufacturado antes de 84, usted no puede moverlo. Si vamos a hacer un video, vamos a hacer un video. They sure inform you. Yeah. I'll send this over to CNN. Call me, Mina. I'm telling you.